welcome to another episode of Four Times in a Podcast. It is the 19th of June. There hasn't been much happening in the world of Celtic, but we thought we should probably get an episode out anyway just to discuss the plans for the pod moving into the 22-23 season. If you follow us on Twitter, you're probably aware that we've recruited two new members. I'd like you to say we've got one of them on with us just now. We've got Kieran on, so this is a, a different voice. So, Kieran, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. Thanks for having me. Welcome aboard. So, you obviously, back a few months ago, we asked people to put in applications if they, they kind of wanted to come on board and get access to, to certain things that we've not been able to get to, like the B-team games and then speak mm-hmm. to the manager afterwards. That's something you'll probably be doing next season. Are you looking forward to it? What's your plans in terms of the B-team? And obviously, I know you've got quite a few other ideas for the podcast. Yeah, of course. So, uh, next season, I just want to focus on Pretty much going to the B team games, speaking to the manager, even speaking to some of the players, see if they like, for example, take like look at players like Cal McGregor, Tierney, Kieran Tierney, and see if they can follow in their footsteps and just see what their like ambitions are and stuff like that. Also, if I can see any of like young talent coming through who I would like to pick myself to go through, and then just the same as the women's game because I don't think that gets enough coverage really, where it's pretty much the same team, just well, same club, different team. So I think that's my plans going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think, if you're being honest, we've probably neglected the, the B team and the women's team as well, just because we, we, we don't have enough time, we all work full time. So I think it would be good to, to obviously explore these uh, different sections of the club. As you say, it's still part of the club. And obviously bringing yourself and Brian on, who I'm sure the listeners will get to meet a bit later on in the week on board, it, it gives us the chance to kind of have a, a deeper dive into these these sections of the club and I'm sure there's a lot of interest in both. I think we've seen that with the, the women's cup final, the, they won the double recently. There was quite a decent attendance at Tynecastle for it and then the B team as well. Hopefully there's a, the future of the club there. You, you've mentioned Callum McGregor and Keir Tierney, two people who have been on to have, have great careers. So spot on, Andy's also on with today. You're like myself, you're a, an original member of Four Terms. People will be bored hearing me and you talk. So so, are you looking forward to, to bringing new people on board and looking at retirement? <laughs> I'm sure many people will be wishing for that, but no, like you say, it, there's obviously a lot of constraints with, with us. We all work full time and it's hard to, obviously, you come up, you've got all these ideas and all these ambitions and things you want to do, but it can be difficult at the time. And again, just, I would say, uh, so, as we came out of COVID again, even getting all four years on at the same time can be, a, can be quite difficult in moving into things like YouTube and, again, getting more exposure around the B team. And particularly, like Kieran's already said, there'll be, there'll be young boys coming through that fans will want to hear about. They'll, if there's boys coming back for injury, if you, even if you sort of look at Julian, Christopher Julian, when he was doing playing some B team games, it's not really something that, that we had much opportunity to cover. And that's obviously stuff which is relevant to the first team because you want to hear about how they're getting on. And... That's sort of, that's obviously important. I and mean, then like I say, there's gonna be hopefully there's there's youth players who are ready to sort of take that next step that, that McGregor took, that Kieran Tierney took. And it's it's something we want to hear about. So having the opportunity to, to bring people on and, and expand and, and and get that get that covered, I think is, is something that we've we've wanted to do for a while. And we thought the best way of doing that was was bringing more people on board. So at that and then like I say, coupled with, with YouTube is obviously People have suggested, people have asked us, listeners have, have, have said that, that it seems to get a good reaction any time we have sort of dabbled into the YouTube stuff, but it's not just sort of regular podcasts like this. So, again, that's something that we're going to try and sort of move into. And I think here the Brian will really help do that. Like I say, there's there's more bodies there now, and, and there's people who are really interested in, in everything that's going on at the club and we'll obviously come up with more ideas and help us put it together. Um, so I think moving forward, it's, it's probably the best time to do it moving into any season and hopefully the listeners will, will see what we're trying to do and so they'll appreciate the more coverage that we're bringing them. Uh, absolutely. I think we've obviously been quite inconsistent since time began. Really, the only time we were consistent was during the, the uh, 2021 season because there was nothing else to do and there was uh, a, lot, a lot to get through. But 
I think the plan is to be more consistent in terms of content. You'll probably see your ugly mugs on YouTube. I know a lot of people, for some reason, have been wanting the cameras to get turned on. So uh, be careful what you wish for, as Brendan Rodgers said. So uh, it's just about kind of taking it to the next step and trying to make four times slightly more, I don't want to say professional, that would be a step too far, but make it a bit more consistent. And hopefully we can offer something to keep people going when they're in their work vans or they're out of walk or whenever it is that people find the, the time to listen to us. This episode probably won't take too long. It's basically just a, an introducing Kieran and then catching up about, there's, there's not been much news, but um, obviously one of the big things, Kieran, was the signing of Cameron Carter Vickers, who was on loan at the club last season. What, what was your thoughts on Vickers' first season at us? And uh, obviously going forward, he is going to be a, a big part of the squad. Yeah, like you said, I think I think I can speak on behalf of pretty much every Celtic fan you'll ever speak to. He had one of the best seasons, especially for a player that's just came in. Like I said, he's been contender for a player of the season. He was personally my player of the season. I would have picked him. Um, I think he was just outstanding. And if he could repeat that next season, then that's just a bonus. And the fact that we got him, I think he would have been more of a priority to get over Jota. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love Jota to sign and I think he will, but I think the main priority was a centre-back, because especially with a presence like Carter Vickers, you know, he's a big strong boy, so he's not the easiest to play against if you're a striker. Absolutely, I've no doubt that there'll be people disputing whether they would have rather signed him or Jota. Hopefully, hopefully we get both, but yeah, I was delighted with him in his first season. I thought he was excellent, really strong, calm, composed, read the game well. I think it was good to get him signed so quickly, and it's a four-year deal. He's coming into the kind of prime years of his career, so I think he spent a lot of time. He had seven loan clubs during his time at Tottenham, but now we get him settled with us, and I think that the lure of Champions League football and obviously working under this manager's played a a huge part in that. Andy, I'll come back to you. Uh, Vickers signing a, a good bit of business, I think. I don't know the actual fee. I mean, there's some saying six million rising to ten, but I don't. I don't know if I believe Celtic would be would be paying something like that. Ah, yes. Yeah, you get these sort of figures, and everybody's been disputing about it. But the, the most important thing is the deal was done done early. Again, it's not something that's we've let drag on into the last stages of a window. And I suppose the benefit this year really is we know we're sort of guaranteed that Champions League football. So there's no these qualifiers women that, that's the usual worry I, I can the fact that we've got that's probably a massive reason why the club have went out and spent that money because they're a guaranteed income but a huge signing outstanding last season I, I said at the time that uh, I don't think you could argue if, if he was sort of the player of the year it was just a what he done at the, the sort of the back line really was we just did that was looked a different outfit when he was there. Comfortable in the ball, strong, good in both boxes. He's like he's so many attributes to his game and he's only going to improve. He's, he's still got sort of time in his side to, to become a better player and I think I think we will see that. And obviously he's been called up for the American national team as well and he's played games with him. So these thing only only ages development, but a huge signing for the club really. Uh, it's, it's one that, like I said, I think it's already been mentioned, but between him and Yota, I think everybody was swaying towards Carter Vickers. I mean, ideally we sign them both, I think we will as well, but it's, it's massive for the club, especially not to let him go, because there will have been interest with other clubs. We would have had a year in his deal at Spurs, and obviously with the fee that we go open for, there would have been interest there, but I think the club have probably been out and sort of let let the intentions known to him. Um, spoke with him, obviously he's bought into with the manager's day, which is huge, so Look forward to having coming back in and just the club moving forward. I think it's it's again seems to be and hopefully it continues, but it seems to be that intentions are clear when Ange is it is here in terms of signings, they all happen fairly quickly. There's no sort of this mulling about and there's no I know we signed a couple of players sort of late on in the transfer window before, but for the most part I would say that any business we do under Ange is sort of Hassle free, there's none of this sort of bumps in the road and in the usual shape we see for signings. But well, I'm delighted with Tony, he's an outstanding football player, brings so much to the team, and he's, he's only going to improve. And again, I think it's so making that signing is it, it only improves the prospects of players like Yota wanting to stay and have a crack at sort of Europe next season, have a crack at the Champions League. And I think that's obviously a big factor for, for attracting players like that to come and to stay here. So I I'm looking for I'm looking forward to seeing him back in a Celtic jersey, particularly that new away one gets a fucking belter. Uh, as it's nice to get business done early as opposed to I mean it's kind of chalk and cheese for last season whereby this year there's no Champions League qualifiers they can enjoy the summer we're no reading through I can't even mind the guy's name in Twitter is it something Lubo that 
has to explain how who we can play and how many points it's worth and different rounds and seeding and if you lose this round you're dropping in here so it's, it's, it's nice to be relaxed and to get business done so quickly especially one of the the main targets was was Vickers along with Jota it's, it's it's excellent hopefully we can get a few new guys in before the preseason kicks off and then it gives Ange the full kind of pre-season camp with him and he can, he can look to move into the, the start of the season with everybody kind of refreshed and the new guys kind of bedded in and settled and, and ready to go. Here in the other kind of rumoured position now, I guess, is Seagrest as a, as a backup goalkeeper. For me, I, I know some people seem to have been getting themselves a bit kind of upset about this potential signing for me it seems to make sense he's a good goalkeeper he'll probably play a couple of cup games he's good cover he's on a free to me it's kind of should business I don't know about yourself I uh, like you said I, I think it's good business before we signed Hart he was actually my number one target he, I would have liked him to come in and be the position that Hart was but obviously I'm glad we've got Joe Hart he's had an incredible season as well but if something was to happen to him I don't think I'd be able to trust Scott Bain and goals yeah, I'd prefer the cover from you know, a, a goalie that's played as the number one for so long, like like Bain's only been back up for so many years. And I know that's what Seagus would come in to do, but I think I would trust him more. Every time we play against Dundee United last season or the season before, he's always done an outstanding job and potentially been their man in the match. Most games against us, in games like against Strangers and Hearts and Hibs, I think he's always been an outstanding player. So especially as a free, free transfer, I don't think you can go wrong with that. Because he's not going to be on big wages himself. himself. Uh, he usually does have a, a good game. I think there, he did drop one clanger against us in the 3-0 Cup game last season. I think he kind of he just dropped the ball at the feet of Jack and Marcus, But we'll let him off with that. But I, I think he's, he's, he seems to be a good enough goalkeeper. I do understand that people think we should be aiming for keepers that are, are better with their feet and obviously to, to execute Ange ball as it is a bit better. But... I just I don't see the club being as ruthless as that and getting rid of Joe Hart and bringing somebody like that. And I just I think Joe Hart's obviously provided a lot more than just being a good goalkeeper. He's really a leader. He's a winner, which I think is always important. I know you can't really quantify these these kind of things and how important they are. But I think um, having a guy who's so experienced, played in the Champions League, I think he's played in the Champions League semi-final. He's won Premier League trophies as well, accustomed to, to immense pressure and, and scrutiny. So... For me, I'm happy with Joe Hart, and if Seagrest is going to be the backup, that's fine. I know Scott Bain signed a new deal. I don't really know the point of that, but he, he can obviously be the third backup. And then I think uh, the young boy, his name escapes me for the, the B team. I think people have a lot of high hopes for him. Hopefully next season you could tell us a bit more about him, Kieran, but his, his name escapes me at the moment. So I think if we sign Seagrest, I'd be happy with that. Uh, another big one that's been rumoured, again, I don't know how much I, I trust kind of internet rumours, but it's, it's all I have to go, go on at the moment because unfortunately we don't have any sources and we're not in the know, would be Burnaby. I think that's how you pronounce it. The left back from, I think it's Lanus in uh, Argentina. Do you know much about him, Kieran? I'm just going to find out there. If you don't, that's fine, because I certainly don't. If I'm honest with you, just from YouTube clips, and I'm pretty sure he was good on Football Manager. But other than that, no. What I've seen from clips is he looks fast. He looks good. He looks a good passer of the ball, and he looks like he can track back, which is kind of what we need. But other than that, honestly, I don't know too much. Hopefully we sign him, and I can see a bit more of him this season, and... If he comes, he'll succeed. But, yeah, I don't know that much about him, to be honest. Andy, I'll fire the same to you. I mean, I've read a few things saying that he would probably fit a style and it sounds as though he is a good player, but I'd be lying if I say I've even bothered to watch any clips. I don't like to kind of get tied up in these players before there's any, anything concrete. I don't really trust, trust the media. I suppose it's always difficult, really, to, like you say, no, it's true and what isn't it, but there's obviously been a lot of interest rumoured in him and it seems to be sort of ramping up. But again, it's similar to when we signed, obviously, each of the boys for Japan. It just sort of was a bit left field, didn't come out of anywhere, really. And turned out that it was, they were deals that were in motion for a while, so it seems to be that that's the rumour. And I know that, I think it was maybe in the player's agent that's come out and said there is definitely interest in him. In Europe, in by all accounts, there seems to have been a bid made by Celtic that was initially rejected, so... I, ideally that is the case and, and we are looking to bring him in but I think again I'm, I can't I can confess to being an expert in the boy a bit similar to Kieran came across he came across a player like football manager but that's really about it but I know he's been capped by Argentina before 
Um, he's obviously a young boy. I think he's like 21 year old. And when I was having a look, as well, I've seen he's had, had a couple of goals this season, last season, whatever you want to call it, for the club. Lannis, who, by all accounts, are one of the sort of bigger teams in Argentina. So it seems to be a, a good signing on the face of it. And to be honest, I, I, I trust Ange at this point. I fully trust that it'll be somebody that he wants. And he seems to fit the, fit the style of play. Like you see, I just said that I made it known a million times that if it's all about obviously the player having ability, but the player needs to have that attitude. They need to they need to fit fit the club, fit the system, and fit what we're trying to do. And if I just sort of made the judgment that the player does, then I, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see him come in. But again, a player sort of capped the Argentina at a young age, playing for one and obviously the. Their home clubs is is, is obviously quite impressive, and you, that type of signing that, that gets you a bit excited. Again, they've they've played in like their equivalent of sort of the South the South American champ, Champions League, Europa League, the South America, and things like that. So he, he's obviously a talented player. So it's hopefully he can come out here and implement that and, and improve the squad. And um, left back is an area that that we need to improve. Um, I know there was there's, there's been a couple of left backs rumored as well. There was the boy that plays for, I think it's Hammerbury in, in Sweden, which is, so it just seems to have went dead. So don't know if that was only ever just a rumour or if it was more than that. But I, again, like I say, it's a, a, anybody at this point that I'm signs, I'm I tell you, I'm quite, quite excited about because I, I, I just I just trust them to be able to get it right. And the secret thing, I think people are just getting themselves tied up in things. I don't really know why you would be annoyed about it. I think it's a, I think it's a smart signing. I would say we probably did need a, a backup keeper. And let's be honest, Scott Bain isn't good enough. Ah, he's not really going to be playing every week. But there is times where touch with Disney happen, but Joe Hart could go out and fucking break his finger or something. Like it. It, it could, keepers can get injured and it's an important position and they can win you points in their own, which Joe Hart has. The reality is that Seacrest is a better keeper than, than Scott Bain is. So it, it makes all the sense to me that as a guy that's obviously willing to come in, he knows he's going to be second fiddle, so he'll no be upsetting upsetting the squad. He'll no be there spitting the dummy at the pram that, that he's no starting. He, he won't be expecting to be. Ah, if he gets his opportunity, he'll, he'll try to take it, which is exactly what you want to see. But he's a very good goalkeeper for long enough. He's he, uh, You've seen him save points for, for Dundee alone. He was, he was a keeper for Dundee that's finished fourth in the league, and I think behind Silicon Rangers. I, I'm not sure if, if I'm right, but I'm sure they conceded maybe the, obviously Silicon Rangers then I'm sure it was Dundee United for the, the, the least amount of goals conceded. I would need to double check that, but he's he's obviously got a lot of them. So I, I think it's a smart signing. Always had good, good games against us, against Rangers. Any of the big games, he always seems to pop up. And when you mentioned the one, Clay Tony, it's I mean, show me a goalkeeper. There's no head one. Um, it's a position where any mistake you're probably need a goal. So uh, I think it's I think it's a smart signing. No going to be on mental wages or anything either. So. I think it makes a lot of sense to me, particularly when we're going to have again four competitions to go. On. You need that squad depth. Aye, absolutely. I think obviously the fixtures have come out, and it's going to be a lot of Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday games. So it's going to be we're going to be playing twice a twice a week, quite a lot. So you do need the uh, strength and depth, which is something we lacked the first half of last season, and then we definitely had it getting into the the second half, which helped us to, to push on and, and win the league. Is there any other positions, uh, positions, Kieran? you think that we, we desperately need a, a bit of improvement? Yeah, I think with uh, Rogic and Beaton leaving, I think centre-mid's quite quite an important area, and probably not as a starter, probably just as like a rotational player, because obviously we've got Hattati, McGregor, O'Reilly, players like that, that would probably be, probably be in my ideal eleven. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we were looking... Well, I don't know how true this was. This could just be an internet rumour, but that's Souza, the Brazilian CDM. I'd like to get him in or anywhere, anyone in that position, really, just for backup because you've seen what it's like previous seasons. We can get four injuries at once and just be in the worst form, especially with big games coming up. You've got the Champions League, obviously the Scottish Cup, and then the League, and the League Cup as well, obviously. So one bad injury to our midfield and just need somebody to replace him. For example, like if McGregor gets injured, like he did earlier in the season, that's about it really though. Uh, probably a winger as well if Jota doesn't sign, but I've got a feeling that he will. But apart from that, our front three are quite versatile. They can play striker, left wing, right wing. So I don't think we need an attacker. I think it's just centre mid. Maybe a defender as well, but I've heard today that Julian's potentially staying. If he was to leave, probably a centre back as well, but I feel like he'll be staying. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've seen today that for what's the record. So again, you, you don't know how factual it is, but apparently once they kind of fight for his place, I don't think Anne seems to fancy him because apparently he's been fit for months and he's not really got a sniff. He came on, I think it was a cup game against, was it Wraith Rovers or somebody of that kind of ilk that we, we beat quite comfortably and he came on and then was never seen again. I think we need a, a centre defensive mid. We need somebody that can tackle. We need a bit more power in the, the midfield. Somebody that can break up the play, pass the ball. I think we are still a wee bit soft at times. I think we've had, I've seen this for years. I think we're still lacking a wee bit of a strength. So that would be good, especially for Champions League. We're going to need kind of strong, fast, athletic players that they can they can put a good tackle in. So. I think that's a, that would be the main area for me. Obviously, we've got this left back. If we can get in, him in, I think that would be great. Don't give an wrong. I think Greg Taylor's improved. The Champions League quality, I don't think so. But again, there's not too many of them, I think, that will, will be uh, finding it easy in the Champions League. I think your, your players that are auto- right now, Champions League quality, I'd say Kyogo, McGregor, Vickers, Hart, Juranovic. And then I think the likes of Hitati, Maida and O'Reilly are definitely working towards that. Same with Jota. So I think we've definitely got players that can that will improve. But I just think Greg Taylor, I know Daniel probably if he listens to us, he'll be going to have to see because he's a big Greg Taylor fan. But I still think we can, we can even get a, an even better left back. And then obviously Greg Taylor will, will still play his part. Uh, if you don't get Jota, I'd like to see us bring in another right winger. And if we sell a Yeti, then maybe another striker we should we should bring in just for cover for because there was times where Kyogo and Yakimakis were both both injured, so that wouldn't be ideal. I think if there's any other positions. No, everybody else seems quite quite settled. Would be yourself, Andy? Is there any specific area you would target for uh, improvement? I would say Obviously, left back, as already mentioned, I think that's something the club are looking to to bring in. I think a centre mid. I, I think a centre mid is, is well, we, we do need one, especially we we beat on on his way out. It was really the only sort of cover, I suppose, for McGregor. Obviously, had the good cheese. No, had we've not really got to see too much of him. I don't. I don't know if it's just been because McGregor's. To have been essential to the team and play a similar role. I, I don't know if he's, he's, he, or else he's just no sort of hit the heights that Ange Tolkien did. I really don't know. I, I suppose we'll find out moving into a season when friendly start rolling around. But I, I do think we, we could use somebody else in the middle of the park. And again, I think a number 10. I think losing somebody of Rogic's calibre really only leaves you O'Reilly that's comfortable there. I know people mentioned Tumble, but I don't really see him as the 10. I, he, he's really made there. Mary and eight, isn't he? Um, in, the, in the actual middle of the park, I don't think he's he offers that same that that, that same sort of style of play and that same role that O'Reilly and, and Rogic stay. So we're losing Rogic. I, th- I think that somebody in that position is probably you, you would assume something would be looking at to replace that. I think again, even if you did sign, but I would want to see another winger in because ah, you're, you're probably going to be looking at Maeda and you're on the sides with a badder. But I think. You've obviously still got Forrest, but then we Dembele's going to be, it looks to be obviously away, and I, I think so, maybe another young winger. Obviously a bad, I came in and hit the ground running and probably played a lot more because of his performances and his stats that he was putting up than, than we expected, but I, I would maybe like to see his looking and see if there's maybe a young winger that could come in and maybe you know, take a starting position, but look to, look to build on that and, and gaze a bit more depth. In the wide areas, I think I think a centre half probably, if there's one available that we like, will happen. I, I'm not so sure, sure in the whole Julian scenario. I think if somebody came in and gave us an offer, I reckon the club would accept it. Don't think for whatever reason it's if we just came back for his injury. I don't think it worked out. I actually liked I, I liked Julian particularly in his first season. I thought he was a threat in both boxes. He was good in the air. People like to sort of lean on this thing, seeing he's a shite bag and all the rest of it. But really, other than Dykes when he was at Livingston, I, I didn't really see too many other people trouble him. But other than that, he was he was always solid enough for for the most part. And as I say, he's strong there, but he was comfortable with the ball at his feet as well. He could play it with the left and the right, which I'd I thought would have would have suited the way that we play. But I think I don't know. I, I still get the feeling we, we, I don't I don't I think there'll be quite a few players that we come in. I mean, really, the squad stays the same way. So if you sign Carter Vickers and, and you are the things stay as they were for last season. So I think we could see a left back, maybe two midfielders. There was also rumours of a striker, I suppose, which was surprising. But I could only assume that's for the fact if if a Yeti's away, then he maybe wants a third striker. He obviously doesn't see 
he's, he's, he's my aid as Mary winger and doesn't want to, if, if he did end up in that position, which hopefully he don't, where Kyogo's injured and Jackie Mack is injured, he, he obviously wants to have somebody else there. And listen, competition's always healthy. If the club are willing to pay the money and if the club are willing to bring people in, then I've got no doubt in my mind that it will not be players who will spit a dummy out because they're not playing. I think that's the big thing for Angie. He speaks to them. He wants to understand them and he wants them to know that what they're coming in is it's a team. It's not just them. Um, so I, I think competition is always healthy. For if, if we do go and sign a couple of players, I wouldn't be surprised. But the important ones for me is if you could only sort of pick three, for example, it's we need a left back and we need we need a, a midfielder and we need somebody somebody else who can support McGregor. Um, we were fortunate that he could have put, he could put his mask on and, and play out the remainder of the season, but that 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 could have been a lot worse. And again, you're not going to go and find somebody of McGregor's calibre right away. It's that'd be surprising, but somebody who can offer support and, and sort of play the, play a similar role. And again, if they're effective at sort of playing behind playing as Mary had sort of holding midfielder, then it, it releases McGregor to go forward at times and gives you a bit more versatility and to change things and you can adapt. So um, I would say a left-back, a centre-bid, and probably I, I think a number 10 is going to be pretty important because Rogic offered us so much. And I, I think that we need somebody who can, can sort of get on a half turn, can make things happen. He'll chip in with goals, he'll chip in with assists and really sort of a ball carrier, somebody that can take the ball and he, he can take it maybe 10, 20, 30 yards and gets, gets defenders going backwards and make something happen. I think O'Reilly's obviously good and he'll, he'll give you that and he's only going to improve but I think you need somebody else as well to push him. Uh, it's, it's an exciting time with kind of the fact that we've got the likes of O'Reilly, Turnbull, Q, Jakimakis. We've still got so many good players already there. It's just a bit... I don't think... I think Anne said himself it's not going to be as many people coming in. It's just adding real quality now. So I'm looking forward to seeing how we line up for the first game of the season. There's, there's going to be a lot of headaches for Postacoglu. I don't really have anything else to add. I feel as though this episode's been on longer than I expected. It's a, uh, just a recap. We've obviously we've brought Kieran on board. We've shared his Twitter on our Twitter, so feel free to go and give him a follow. We've got a focus on the B team and the women's team next season. We're going to try and provide a lot more content with that. YouTube, we will eventually turn the cameras on so you can see our ugly faces. And we've also got Brian coming on board as well. So we've got a lot of ideas. We're looking forward to putting them in place. And aye. If you want us to, if there's anything people want to see or hear us talk about, fire it into the YouTube comments or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or wherever it may be. So, aye, thanks very much for listening. Bye.